Grounded to short, and that is the ball game. Yankees win it 10-1 the final as they flex here at Kaufman. The Royals suffering a tough loss to the Yankees, 10-1. to The final score on Tuesday night at Coppin Stadium as the Yankees have taken the first two games in the series. Well, more on that coming up here on the Sports Ticket on Katie Country 94. So be listening here. We're going to have a shorter show today, by the way, because I'm going to be heading out here uh, to uh, attend my friend Randy's funeral here this morning. So um, just wanted to pass that along. That will be a shorter Sports Ticket today, brought to you by Akiba Brothers Automotive in Beloit. Cuba Brothers, your home team for fast and friendly auto repair. Also coming up here on the Sports Ticket, a NBA Finals Game 3 preview. And a Celtics player that uh, is day-to-day with an injury that could impact the way this series goes the rest of the way. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays out here for the, uh, the Celtics with the injury that they do have. We'll talk about that here momentarily. And travesty. In the competitive eating world, it's a story that rocked the nation yesterday. I'm being a little facetious, but I'm also being actually kind of serious because uh, when we get to that, uh, we'll kind of explain what that means and and what we're talking about there. So, again, uh, that's all coming up here on an abbreviated sports ticket this morning. brought to you by Kiever Brothers Automotive in Beloit. Again, the Royals opening out their... Four game series, the Yankees lost on Monday, and then they had a game Tuesday in which they opened out, and Brady Singer was not solid from the start on the mound for Kansas City. The Yankees scored two runs in the top of the first inning. They added four more in the top of the fourth to take a six to nothing lead. They scored on an error in the sixth to lead seven to nothing, and then the long ball came where Aaron Judge hit a two run home run in the seventh, and Giancarlo Stanton had a uh, solo homer right after that in the seventh to go up 10 to nothing. Uh, they did have a homer, a, a three-run shot, actually, also in the fourth inning did the, the Yankees. So um, three homers uh, and six of their runs were scored off the long ball uh, in that win. Again, the final was 10-1 uh, to one in favor of New York. Freddie Fermin had a solo homer in the bottom of the seventh inning for the Royals to get their lone run. As I mentioned, it wasn't a great start for Brady Singer from the get-go as he dropped a 4-3 and three with the loss, ended up giving up um, six earned runs, seven total, on seven hits and five and two-thirds innings. He threw 103 pitches. He did have six strikeouts and a walk in the loss. Uh, Again, Singer now four and three. As Royals manager Matt Cochero gave his thoughts on Singer's performance. Yeah, just, you know, it was a a struggle right out of the get-go. You know, I mean, just to get uh, consistency in the zone. I mean, I think his stuff looked good. He threw some pretty good breaking balls and located some pretty good fastballs, but just not, not enough consistently early to... To keep him off the board. So again, the Royals taking the loss. They're now 39 and 29 on the season. The Yankees with the win, improving to 48 and 21, keeping pace as the uh, leader in the AL East. The uh, Royals and Yankees will play the, the third of four games coming up tonight at 7:10 at Kauffman Stadium. Cody Potsy is 2-0, the 172 ERA. He'll be the starting pitcher for the Yankees and will take on Dan Altabia, who's making his starting debut for the Royals. He did pitch one game earlier this season in relief, as, again, this will be his first uh, start for his career, actually. He's uh, pitched in 120 games, but has never made a start. I'm going to guess Altabia will be an opener for Kansas City. Um, And then they'll probably go to a, a long reliever at some point there. In tonight's game, again, a 7-10 first pitch between the Yankees and the Royals. Again, the Yankees uh, staying atop the American League East standings. They are currently two and a half games ahead of the Orioles in second place. They're 44-42. and The only two teams with winning records there in the AL East. Three teams with winning records in the AL Central. The Royals are now five and a half behind the Guardians, who picked up another win there last night. Guardians are 43 and 22. Royals 39 and 29. The Twins 35 and 32. They're in the AL Central. So uh, the Yankees at 46 and 20. And, or the, excuse me, the Phillies are 46 and 20. And now the Yankees uh, still just that one hundredth of percentage point behind the, the Phillies for the best record in Major League Baseball. Again, Yankees 48-21. and 21, They do have the best record in the American League. So you can always find the updated Major League Baseball standings at MLB.com. So the Royals continuing on there in Major League Baseball. I want to see if there's anything uh, new to uh, the uh, notes in baseball, if there's any uh, news that came out here. 
this morning, and it doesn't look like there is. So we'll move on now. The NBA Finals getting set to take place here tonight. And we will take a quick break here on Kitty Country 94 and the Sports Ticket and come back with that. Does your vehicle have a leak, squeak, or rattle? Is there an annoying warning light shining at you from the dash? I'm Elijah at Kiever Brothers Automotive in Beloit. If you have an automotive issue, don't just live with it because you're afraid of what it might cost to get it fixed. We offer a 15-minute no-wrench inspection for free so you can get a professional opinion about your problem without spending a dime. Call or stop by today. We're happy to take a look at almost anything for free. That's Kiever Brothers Automotive just south of the courthouse in Beloit and online at keeverbrothers.com. All right, Dusty Dennis back with you on the Sports Ticket. Again, brought to you by Kiva Brothers Automotive in Beloit. They're your home team for fast and friendly auto repair. Find them south of Courthouse and Beloit or visit them on the web at kivabrothers.com. Also, uh, tonight, the NBA Finals. It's Game 3. The Celtics have a 2 to nothing lead on the Mavericks. Boston cruised in Game 1 and had a big uh, run there in the, the second half, really, uh, in, in Game 2 to pull away early in the fourth quarter and ended up winning it uh, by single digits to get the uh, second win of the series. Game three is tonight in uh, Dallas as the uh, Celtics can have that 2 to nothing series lead. And just looking at the uh, the series overall, uh, one of the things that we noticed in game one that the uh, Celtics won 107-89 to 89 was that you know, Chris Thompson Porzingis, who hadn't played in 38 days, was back on the floor and in the lineup for the Celtics and, and made a really big impact really in that first game, whether he was blocking shots, scoring points, um, rebounding assists. I mean, he, he was that, there and made his presence known in that first game. And, and you know, as I was looking at it and, and kind of, you know, analyzing the, the game and the situation there, um, you know, I, I felt like if Kristaps Porzingis could continue to play in this series and, and be a factor that he – uh, would give Boston a very, very good chance to to not only win this series but to dominate this series. And and really for the first couple of games that's been the case. He did come down weird on his leg there in the second half of the 105 to 98 win on Sunday, and so there was a little bit of concern there for Porzingis, and rightfully so. The concern is there, and he has a very rare injury as. Uh, he gets uh, for some reason I lost what I was looking at, and um, I have to pull that back up. But Kristaps uh, Porzingis, his injury has been uh, noted as a uh, tear of the medial retinaculum, allowing dislocation of the posterior tibialis tendon in his left leg. And so his status is day to day as far as whether he'll be able to play or not here in the uh, third game for sure, and then the rest of the NBA Finals. So we'll keep track of that. And, uh, again, uh, he was having such a big impact on the Finals already. Expanding a little bit more on that for Porzingis, he uh, commented on Tuesday, said it's kind of a random situation. I felt something, and now I have to deal with it. Um, then, uh, the self, as we said, yeah, it's going to be day-to-day. I'll see how I am tomorrow, and obviously going to do everything I can to be out there tomorrow, which will be today, when he said this on Tuesday, and uh, we'll see is what he says. So uh, there's no indication that Przingis will be ruled out and not permitted to try to play against the Mavericks in Game 3, uh, according to sources. The Celtics said the injury occurred in the third quarter, and, and it did. Um, he's been seen wearing a sleeve and a brace of some sort on his left leg, uh, Przingis had, so... Uh, Przingis, when he was asked whether the injuries in these playoffs are weighing on his mind, he says, I don't care. I've been through some stuff in my career. Obviously, this is a rough patch coming back and having something happen right away again. It's tough, just a tough moment right now, but I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Mind is good. And he again says, we'll see tomorrow. He was outstanding for the uh, Celtics in that first game. He exploded for 11 points in the first quarter in game one off the bench and and really uh, established himself as a a key component of what was going to happen there. Uh, with the Celtics here in the NBA Finals, if he could stay healthy. Again, he's had an issue staying healthy pretty much the entire Finals. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Boston, obviously, uh, was a team that was better during the regular season, um, had the best record in the NBA, and they've kind of cruised through the, the playoffs, uh, albeit taking on some teams that did have injuries too. But again, with an injury of their own, and Christoph Porzingis, who uh, obviously, as you could tell in Game 1, can provide a, a pretty significant impact and make the team even better than it already is. Uh, that That's a big loss uh, that they had during the Eastern Conference playoffs that they had to deal with and still were able to kind of roll through. And, and again, uh, people can complain or talk all they want about um, 
who is or isn't playing for whatever team, you still got to go execute. And the Celtics went twelve and two on the eastern side of the place of the playoffs, Eastern Conference, and they're now fourteen and two overall in the playoffs. So this isn't a, an accident that the Celtics are here. Um, it's not an accident that they can perform very, very well without Kristaps Porzingis. They just have guys step up. Uh, you know, Al Horford will will have to step back in probably if Porzingis can't go fully into a, a role that uh, he kind of had during the Eastern Conference playoffs of being more of a scorer and, and being more important to what the Celtics are doing in that uh, post position. So uh, he does pop out and shoot some threes, and, and he can play around uh, around the wing and, and do quite a bit, few different things. So, you know, Al Horford is a guy that uh, can fill in there. It's not like he doesn't have experience. It's not like he's not uh, been a, a very, very solid player for his entire career. But uh, Horford will undoubtedly need to probably provide more if, if uh, well, there's no if or probably if Perzingis is out. It, he will undoubtedly need to uh, provide more for the Celtics here in this finals. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can do so much. Derek White's obviously had uh, some big games in the postseason as well. What I'm trying to say is if Porzingis can't go, the Celtics aren't down and out. They're still going to be fine. They're still likely going to be favored to win this uh, NBA Finals, but we'll see tonight. Again, game three is at 7.30 in Dallas this evening between the Celtics and the Mavericks. One other NBA note to pass along. The NBA has sent out invites to uh, 12 uh, potential draft picks, according to uh, sources. And there's Zachary Rasakshir, Alex Sarr, Donovan Klingon, Reed Shepard, Matas Bezelis, Stephon Castle, Dalton Connect, uh, Tijan Salon, Ron Holland, Cody Williams, Devin Carter, and Jacoby Walter received the first batch of 12 invites that were sent out on Tuesday. It sounds like another 11 to 12 invites are expected to be sent out in waves starting next week for the NBA draft. The um, These invites are for the green room, which is a staging area in front of the NBA draft podium where the players and families and agents uh, await Adam Silver to call the player's name um, upon selection. Most of those guys are probably going to be lottery picks in the NBA draft, so those are the ones that are invited at the moment. Um, uh, receiving an invitation is considered a positive sign for the uh, player's draft stock, obviously. Uh, NBA draft will be actually conducted over two days for the first time this year. The first round will be coming up June 26th, which would be Wednesday. Usually it's on a Thursday, so the uh, they're moving a day up for round one. And then the regular day would be the Thursday, June 27th. But the first round is at Barclays Center in Brooklyn on June 26th. Uh, you wouldn't think any of these guys that are invited are going to have to stick around more than a day for the NBA draft coming up uh, again June 26th and 27th. Uh, June 27th, it'll actually be held at the ESPN Studios in Lower Manhattan. Um, there may be additional scrutiny over the final players invited to the green room, uh, but uh, uh, again, the first round is June 26th, and that last batch of invites last year actually was not sent until two days prior to the draft. So uh, all 12 of the initial players, uh, again, that have been invited are expected to be lottery picks so uh, those those 12 shouldn't have to stay around any longer than the first day and their name will be called out and picked and selected by one of the teams for the nba draft all right we're wrapped this uh, sports ticket again apologize for the shorter sports ticket but we do want to get out uh, today and, and get to uh the funeral for randy copes here this morning over in dispatch so uh we'll we'll have a Hopefully a longer show. Uh, we'll have a recap of NBA Finals Game 3 coming up tomorrow and, and the Royals and, and more to talk about uh, tomorrow on the sports ticket anyway. Um, you know it's a slow news day in sports when I'm bringing up a hot dog eating contest and competitive eating on the sports ticket. There's a big – listen, I I talk about it earlier. It's like it's a scandal. It's it's uh, rocking the nation and rocking maybe even the world. It's it's not it's not that big it's not that big of a deal but it actually is a, f- a fairly big deal for for what it is and what it means to the competition. Uh, Joey Chestnut, the perennial winner of the annual July Fourth Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest competition, is out of this year's beef barf, <laughs> is the way the New York Post put it uh, over a deal that he made to represent a different Wiener brand. Um, the brand is Impossible Foods, according to sources. The leader, the leading maker of meatless meats, is known. And I, it's always funny to me, meatless meats, It's and obviously meats is in quotation marks, known for its impossible burger, uh, but they do have an impossible uh, 
dog as well, I believe, uh, recently launched, yeah, a Frankfurter imposter that's made from plants, quote unquote. Um, and the Nathan's contest that is uh, traditional for being there on the famous boardwalk, Coney Island tradition. And uh, they sponsor, Nathan's is a hot dog brand, and they sponsor the hot dog eating contest. So there is an issue here, and we'll get to it. Um, Chestnuts won this uh, Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest 16 times, and every year since 2016 on the 4th of July. A world record 76 dogs and buns in 2021. He kept his title 62 last year, and a rep for Major League Eating which uh, Nathan sanctions again to run the event, said the organizers bent over backwards to meet Chestnut's uh, various other demands and even agreed to let him participate in a rival Labor Day hot dog eating contest to be taped for TV as long as no hot dog brand was mentioned. But they did say they drew the line on letting Chestnut pitch for a different hot dog brand. A source said Chestnut was paid $200,000 to appear in the Nathan's contest last year and was offered a $1.2 million four-year contract going forward. An insider said that the two sides could still come to a resolution but before July 4th, but it depends on Joey. He's the Michael Jordan of competitive eating, but imagine if Michael Jordan said to Nike, I love being the face of Nike, but I also want to do Adidas commercials too. It makes sense, right? If Chestnut's out for good, leading sportsbook Bovoda called Jeffrey Esper, who came in second last year, eating 49 hot dogs this year's favorite at uh, minus 225 odds. So, again, uh, Joey Chestnut uh, is out. MLE said in a statement, we are devastated to learn that Joey Chestnut has chosen to represent a rival brand that sells plant-based hot dogs rather than competing in the 2024 Nathan's Famous Fourth of July hot dog eating contest. MLE and Nathan's went to great lengths in recent months to accommodate Joey and his management team, agreeing to appearance fee, allowing Joey to compete in a rival unbranded hot dog eating contest on Labor Day. For nearly two decades, we have worked under the same basic hot dog exclusivity provisions. However, it seems that Joey and his managers have prioritized a new partnership with a different brand over our long-time relationship. It seems that all those comments, when you actually just read them out of context, and and you're talking like all this for a hot dog eating contest? Are we being serious here? And the answer is, yeah, they're being serious. It's the, the, I'm going to tell you what the ratings, and I'm not, I don't know how, how good the ratings are. I don't have that right in front of me anyway, right now. Um, I'm going to tell you that, uh, the people that, uh, initially were, were watching, it's like, we, it, it, I like the comment of Joey Chestnut is the Michael Jordan of competitive eating. And he is right. Um, without the sponsor part of it involved with this part of my discussion here, the ratings will hurt without Joey Chestnut there. There's no, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not going to watch it without Joey Chestnut. I need somebody else to build up that credibility and build up a winning streak before I want to watch somebody dominate like that or not dominate, compete because the dominator is not in there this year. Again, they could reach an agreement maybe and figure out a different way to get around the, the sponsorship with impossible. But uh actually is kind of a big deal as far as the, I'm sure ESPN's not happy about it. They carry the hot dog eating contest on their network, and I would guess they're trying to do everything they can to to keep Joey Chestnut in the hot dog eating contest. So, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But it actually is a it's I, I'm it, it, a lot of people probably are talking about this tongue in cheek and acting like it's not that big of a deal. And and I mean in the grand scheme of things, it's not. But uh, listen, it it was a story yesterday, man. People were were definitely talking about it, and it kind of blew up on social media. It's a big deal, and uh, it really is a big deal for the the folks that love the hot dog eating contest on the 4th of July and like taking part in that. So um, we'll see if they can work something out. But as of now, no Joey Chestnut and no wasting my time putting the hot dog eating contest on my TV that day. I'll just keep watching. Usually tennis is going on uh, Wimbledon, I think, at that time. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll watch baseball or something else. I don't need to turn the hot dog eating contest on if Joey Chestnut's not in it. He's the show. He's the ticket. He is the meal ticket. Pun intended. Joey Chestnut likely out of the hot dog eating contest. Big breaking news yesterday. Again, then I'll wrap it up. A shorter version, abbreviated version of the sports ticket this morning. Uh, We'll talk to you again tomorrow and hope you have a great day today, everybody. State, regional, and national sports talk on your schedule. The Sports Ticket Podcast. Subscribe via Apple, Google, and TuneIn Podcasts or sunflowerstateradio.com.